Hey everyone, it's Bill Duran here from Punished Props and I've got a shiny new shop toy to show you. A while back, the folks over at Inventables got a hold of me to review their new X-Carve. So they sent me one, free of charge, because they're awesome, to take a look at and uh, put together and try out. Now this is the fully loaded version. This is the big fella. It came in a whole bunch of boxes, totally disassembled. Uh, one giant box for this huge waste board uh, that was about four feet by four feet. And uh, a couple more bigger boxes for these side rails. They're all aluminum. And then a whole bunch more for the rest of the components. A lot of motors, a lot of wires, a whole bunch of wires, and a whole bunch more electronic components. There are a whole bunch of options too if you're thinking about getting one of these yourself. There's a smaller version that comes in at under a thousand bucks, I think, with some options. Uh, this bigger guy came in at just under 1500, I think. And that's actually a really reasonable price for the amount of machine you get with this. Like I said, it comes disassembled though, and you've got to put it together yourself. That's really where you make up the cost in hard labor. This thing took about two or three full days of my time to put together. Uh, although I will say it did sort of push the limit of my ability to assemble stuff. Uh, mostly Lego is the barrier for me being uh, the art student. But I was able to do it. Uh, there's a whole bunch of really great instructions on their website that you can go through. Again, lots of different options. So when you're going through all of, all of the uh, instructions, make sure you're picking the right motors, the right size, the right screws, a whole bunch of other stuff that you've got to choose correctly uh, to make sure you get it done properly. Uh, some of this stuff on here took me a couple of tries because again, art student, not uh, totally into it, especially the electronic stuff. Uh, it's a little bit challenging for me, like that part right there. I totally installed upside down and the separate motors didn't work on the first go, but lesson learned. Uh, I was able to fix it with the help of people on their forums, which are very active, a lot of helpful people over there. Uh, when it comes to assembling this machine. And if you can rope your dad into helping, uh, that's even better. That's what I did when my parents were visiting. So after putting mine together, here are a handful of recommendations from me to you if you are gonna put one of these together. A, don't lose any pieces. Uh, there are lots of little screws and nuts and bolts uh, and you don't wanna lose them because there aren't any replacement ones. At one point, I did have to go out and buy more uh, screws because I lost some. This is where having a little magnetic tray can help a lot. You can dump out your screws and stuff into there and then they won't go flying everywhere. Also keep in mind that while some of these pieces are identical, like these side plates, there's one over here, one over there, they're cut out identically, obviously to save on time when uh, they're manufacturing these things, they aren't perfectly the same. For example, there is a uh, limit switch on this side and there is not one on the other side, which I found out after putting one on each and <laughs> realizing that I didn't need them. You also want to label the ends of your wires as you go. So for example, these guys here control all the stepper motors for one of each three axes. Uh, so put on the end of one an X and on the other end of that wire another X so that once you've dragged it through this drag chain uh, and you get over to your controller there, you know which one is which axis for attaching them once you get to that part of the build. Overall though, assembly went pretty well. There were a couple of parts I had to do over again just because I'm inept. Uh, but again, a lot of helpful people on the forums were able to dig through a lot of the problems I had, especially the part that I put in upside down. And uh, it went together pretty smoothly. Basically, if I can do it, you can do it. Once the machine was all configured and calibrated and ready to go, I did their normal welcome home uh, cut thing, which put my name on a little piece of wood, and it worked flawlessly. I was actually uh, pretty surprised because I put this together and it worked! Yay! First try! The test pattern was done in Easel, which is Inventable's own software for controlling this machine. Easel is uh, really easy to use and it's really easy to control this machine. They communicate very well, but it is very basic. I did take easel and draw my own pattern to give that a go and it went just fine. I do also like that you could draw your patterns in Inkscape, which is a program I'm very familiar with, and then put those right into easel to do all your cutting. That's probably how I'll do a lot of stuff in the future. Overall, uh, my impressions on this machine is you get a lot of bang for your buck with uh, your purchase. It's a very robust machine with a lot of potential. Uh, Easel is a little limited. It really only does like two dimensional or two and a half D kind of cuts. 
uh, for doing compound curves and all sorts of really cool things like that, you're gonna have to turn to some other software. I did a little bit of testing of that on my own, making my own 3D models, uh, using MeshCam to uh, draw up the G-code and then using some other uh, G-code sender to send it to the machine. You can literally tell this machine to do whatever you want, which means that you will uh, eventually tell it to do things that either ruin your piece or break bits, which are two things I've already done. <laughs> Uh, especially the really tiny one thirty-second of an inch bit. I didn't even get the spindle going on that before I snapped it right off. But that's all a part of the learning curve. I know that I have a lot of learning to do to really sort of crack open the potential that this machine gives me. Speaking of that, I've got a lot of projects coming up that this machine would be perfect for, so you definitely want to stick around uh, to make sure you catch a bunch of those. The first one I will be doing will be a dust collection system for this thing. My pal Harrison Cricks from Volpen Props put together a project on Inventables, I'll link to that down below, uh, including a couple of pieces that uh, get cut out by the machine and then a bunch more parts that come from the hardware store so that I can hopefully save on all the dust this thing generates. And there you go, the x car from Inventables. There'll be links down below to go check it out if you are interested in it and look forward to more from this machine from my shop in the future. Thanks for watching, you guys.